Gremlins! Welcome to another video where I redraw my old art. Today I'll be redrawing this mermaid. The original drawing was created when I was in 8th grade as part of a semester long art project where my goal was to learn to create photorealistic images and draw a series of photographs of magical creatures from my imaginary world. As you can see, this is not photorealistic. At this point in my art journey, I was exclusively using Adobe Illustrator, and when I started this project, I didn't know that the program was not designed for the kind of art I wanted to do. I spent a semester learning to use Adobe Illustrator through an online course and trying my best to draw these very detailed images. Unfortunately, no matter how many details I drew, I couldn't overcome the limitations of my art skills and the program itself. I started this redraw by changing the pose of the mermaid. The original mermaid is traced. I lay on my bedroom floor and tried to make it look like I was floating in water. This led the mermaid to look stiff and uncanny, and definitely not look like she is floating. I also had a problem of adding a lot of detail in some sections of the drawing and barely any details in other areas, leaving the details to stand out in a bad way. Adobe Illustrator isn't built to draw 3D objects, and I was very limited in what shading I could do. In 8th grade, my goal was to create photorealistic images, and my method was to combine actual photos stolen from Google Images and details I tried to draw as realistically as possible. My goal now is to create a detailed image, but not a photorealistic one. I like drawing in a stylized style, with black outlines and exaggerated proportions. I've divided this image into two sections, the mermaid herself and the background. My first focus is the mermaid. I kept some elements of the mermaid the same in my redraw. She still has long purple hair floating around her head in waves. She still has a blue scaly tail and deep blue eyes and pale skin. However, I changed quite a few details in her appearance and dress. I completely redrew her facial features, no longer modelled after my childhood own. I also gave her more clothing and more practical clothing. In the original image, she wears a seashell bra. In the redrawn image, I gave her a bandeau made of canvas and rope collected from a shipwreck. She also has a scrap of fishing net decorating her tail, and a string of pearls around her neck. I made the scales of her tail go further up her torso, rather than having a hard line between her fish and human half. I gave her blue freckles and blue fins in place of her ears. In the original drawing, I drew every single scale. Yes, it took forever. Also, I didn't know how to make the scales curve around a 3D tail, so the pattern compresses at every curve. In the redraw, I gave the idea of scales by drawing out some of the outlines and making a few scales darker or lighter in highlights or shadows. Part of the benefit of drawing in a stylized and outlined style is being able to suggest patterns or textures rather than fully drawing it out. The original art project was a several part project. One part was to learn to use Adobe Illustrator, and was the reason I finally moved on to Photoshop, having outgrown the tools Illustrator provides. One part was to create these fantasy drawings. The final part was using the fantasy drawings to illustrate a guide to the creatures of my imaginary world, Fairyland. First of all, I find it a little strange that younger me classified a mermaid as a creature, not a person, but moving beyond that, here are a few mermaid facts I wrote as a child. Some are consistent with the mermaid media I had access to, others are completely made up. In Fairyland, most mermaids live near a collection of islands called the Pearl Islands, in their own society and culture. They interact with fairies infrequently. Merfolk have green or blue tails, often decorated with pearls and seashell jewellery. They have purple, red, orange, yellow, or pink hair, worn long and loose. They live in buildings made from rock and coral, with abalone decorations. Mermaids tend to be craftspeople, creating jewellery and tools out of ocean debris, stones, shells, pearls, and bones. Most of my mermaid lore was created in games I played in the pool, and much of it has been forgotten. In this image, I strayed a little from my original lore. By using human-made accessories like fishing nets and canvas, I transported this mermaid from my made-up land to a land where fishing nets and shipwrecks exist. While I kept a lot of the mermaid details similar to the original image, I changed most of the background. Most of the original background is one photograph I found on Google Images, with a few random sea creatures drawn to fill it out. It honestly doesn't make much sense. Why is a giant clam randomly sitting on the sand in an empty stretch of sea, or a sea anemone? In the redraw, I changed the background to be the edge of a reef. I kept a few of the elements from my original image, although moved around, but I added a lot more. There is still an orange starfish, several anemones, a giant clam, a school of fish, and two angelfish. However, there are also now rocks covered in different species of coral and algae. Instead of several sea creatures drawn in high detail on an otherwise empty background, the background is much fuller of more simplified sea creatures. When I'd added all the solid colours to the background, I found a photograph demonstrating how colour is affected by being underwater, decided to set this art 10 feet below the surface, and recolored the background to fit. Then I got to the fun part of the drawing, adding layers of blue to make the image look like it's underwater, with the background receding into the blue. I shaded the mermaid and background with dark blue, and added highlights to the mermaid's hair. I drew slanting sunbeams to highlight the central focus of the image. I drew out water patterns for the surface. 
After hours of drawing, this last hour of changing the lighting, shading, and rendering really brings all that work to life. When I presented my project at the end of 8th grade, I finished my presentation with my goals for the future. Those goals involved taking a course on digital painting and continuing to approve my art until I could complete my project in the way I originally pictured it. While I didn't attempt to draw this in photorealistic style, I think I fulfilled this goal. I did learn to digitally paint and illustrate with Photoshop. I think I've improved greatly. In my art project nearly five years ago, I finished three images, including this one, all of similar quality, and had a fourth image that I didn't have time to complete. I hope that over the next few months I can revisit those artworks as well, like I did to this mermaid, and fulfill my goal with the skills I've gained. I had a lot of fun with this redraw, and I hope you enjoyed it. Until I see you again, bye!